All right, so in this video, I'm going to look at the mechanism behind a crossed aldol reaction, a carbonyl condensation reaction. So we have some pretty simple compounds here I'm going to use for this example. We have some acetone, and we have some formaldehyde, which I'm going to react with a 5% sodium hydroxide solution and some ETOH, or ethanol, with the addition of heat. And we will get our condensed carbonyl compound over here and we will get water. So what is the mechanism behind this reaction? Let's walk through it step by step. So we have our acetone right here, and we have our sodium hydroxide, which in solution has ionized into sodium plus one and OH minus one. So what's gonna happen? Well, if you've noticed, I have written out the carbon here, but the CH2 and C the CH3 as a CH2 with another H attached like that, still a CH3, but this will allow us to illustrate better what we're doing. The negative charge from this hydroxide is going to come over here and attack this hydrogen, which is going to cause the electrons bonding the hydrogen to the carbon to kick onto the carbon. Well, that's going to cause carbon to have a negative one charge forming a an internal carbanion here. So let's go ahead and write out what our products at this point will be. We will have our CH3, we'll have our carbonyl carbon, and we will have a CH2 group here, but this carbon now of course has lone pairs and a negative charge. Well now that we've done that and we've created a carbanion, Let's go ahead to the next step of the reaction where our formaldehyde is going to come into play. So we have our formaldehyde right here. We'll draw it in. And the formaldehyde carbonyl carbon is where our next site of attack is going to be. The negative charge on this carbon ion here is going to come and attack the carbonyl carbon of our form would cause five bonds to be made to carbon. Five bonds to carbon, not okay. So we need to kick some of the pi electrons in the pi bond between the carbon and oxygen and the carbonyl onto the oxygen, which will give the oxygen the negative charge. So we have achieved two things in this step. We have caused oxygen to have a negative charge, and we have bound the formaldehyde molecule to this carbon in our acetone. So. Here's what we've come up with. Let's go ahead and write our products out for this. So we have our CH3. Maybe if I could write, we would. We have our CH3 here. We have our carbonyl carbon, which has not been touched yet. We have our CH2. And bound to that CH2 is another CH2 from the formaldehyde with a negative oxygen. Now I'll walk through and show you where everything came from because this molecule looks a little bit a little bit different. So just quickly here, this CH2 is this CH2. This is a CH2 in the formaldehyde and that is this guy right here. This oxygen, now negative, is this guy right here bound to that carbon by just a sigma bond now because we broke the pi bond to move the charge up onto oxygen. So that's where everything came from. This is the molecule that we're dealing with now. So what's the next thing that's going to take place? Well, remember, we have our ethanol. So let's go ahead and draw our, our ethanol here. Uh, well, how about we draw it with the right pen? All right. TO, and I'm going to draw the H out like that because that's how this reaction is going to proceed. So we got our ethanol. The negative charge here is going to come and attack this hydrogen in the ethanol. And that's going to cause this the electrons in the OH bond to go on to the O here, forming an ethoxide anion. So we'll have some ethoxide. So the products for this guy will look like this. CH3, well, come on. All right. CH3, carbonyl carbon, CH2, CH, well, let's draw a bond out here, CH2, OH. All right. And, of course, we need to add our hydrogen in there to make that CH2, the CH3 that it is. I am sorry. 
That is not a CH3. It's just a CH with an H. My bad. Got ahead of myself. All right. So we've got this guy going on. What is our next step? Well, we have the ethoxide anion, and this hydrogen drawn out should be a hint as to what's going to happen here. But now let's calm down. We don't just have to use ethoxide. We could also use hydroxide because, look, we're going to have plenty of that in solution. We have our 5% sodium hydroxide that was our initial reagent. So we could use hydroxide or ethoxide. So we'll just go with ethoxide here for, for fun, you know. So we have our ETO minus. All right, what's going to happen there? Well, it is going to come, the negative charge. Attack that hydrogen. And kick those electrons back up onto that carbon again. We've been here before. We know what happens. And what is this going to yield? Well, here's what we're going to get. That poorly drawn arrow, that's what it yields. All right. Oh, good grief. Okay, there we go. So... Now we've got another carbon ion, so we have CH3, carbonyl carbon, CH, CH2, OH, and we've got our negative charge on this carbon, our lone pairs there, so we have another carbon ion formed. Well, What's going to happen with this carbon ion? Well, we're going to have an intramolecular interaction going on at this point. No reagents required. This negative charge is going to hop right onto, well, that makes it look like it's going onto the carbon. It's not right in between here on that bond, between the CH minus and the CH2, which is going to cause these electrons to jump from this bond up here onto OH, which is going to cause OH to leave. So we will get rid of that in the molecule. Now, I've drawn out the results on the next screen. So let's look at that. All right, so here's what happened. We formed a pi bond here because of these electrons that we kicked on to that. And when OH left, it just left this CH2 by itself here. So we don't have anything attached anymore. So look, this molecule, I am pretty sure, is exactly what we were trying to get at in the first step. So let's look at that. CH3, carbonyl carbon, CH, pi bond, CH2. CH3, carbonyl carbon, CH, pi bond, CH2. Yes, done. All right. So <clears throat> let's do a very quick recap of this crossed aldol car carbonyl condensation reaction. We took acetone and we took formaldehyde in a 5% sodium hydroxide and ethanol solution with the addition of heat to form a condensed carbonyl compound and water. We took our acetone and we took the hydroxide ions in solution to attack a hydrogen on alpha hydrogen on this alpha carbon. Either alpha carbon would have worked, of course, you know, it doesn't matter because uh, this is a symmetrical molecule, acetone symmetrical molecule. So we attacked one of those hydrogens, then to the next step, once we did that, we formed a carbanion right here. So we did that. That carbanion then attacked the carbonyl carbon of formaldehyde, or the only carbon of formaldehyde, but yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> And that allowed these molecules to bind to one another, putting a negative charge on this oxygen and destroying the pi bond. Then ethanol came in and did its magic. We protonated this negatively charged oxygen with the hydrogen from ethanol. That caused us to form an ethoxide anion. That ethoxide anion then, uh, was the negative charge from that anion attacked another alpha hydrogen in our molecule. Uh, in our newly created molecule here, and that caused the formation of another carbanion. That carbanion transferred its charge to where this blue arrow already is, to this guy right here, forming the pi bond and causing OH to leave the molecule, leaving us with our end product, this guy right here, what we needed in the beginning. So. That is a walkthrough for a sample crossed aldol carbonyl condensation reaction.